Uh, morning, Ishan and Rohan. Great to have you on our program, The Business Detective. Uh, can I begin by asking you how you guys got into music and entertainment? Music and entertainment has been there since our childhood, I would say. <laughs> We've always entertaining people. Uh, <laughs> and uh, of course, it became professional in 2008 when we had to sing for the, uh, as an opening act for the world famous platters when they were in Sri Lanka. So, of course, there was no name at that time. We just sang as Rohan and Ishan. But then uh, we had an advertising guru who took us over and uh, branded us. And that's how we hit the stage as, as the Dylan Road. Talk about the progress and, uh, and how enriching it has been so far. It has been very enriching, Dinesh, because we have been able to travel to different continents of the world and sing to... Um, not a local diaspora. We have always sang to foreigners because we are able to speak their language in terms of music. Um, so we have done genres from pop to operatic uh, arias to um, gospel to sacred and uh, uh, the whole lot. So we've, uh, we've been great and we've been glad to have uh, a foreign audience who's liking our music. I think that's the, the most important point is that, that, you know, I know there are many, many Sri Lankan singers who go and sing, uh, but most of them have been singing to a Sri Lankan diaspora. Now, not that, not that we are against that. I mean, we love it, singing for a Sri Lankan diaspora. It gives us nerves, butterflies when you sing to a Sri Lankan diaspora. But uh, we've been blessed enough to go and sing to, as Ishan said, to foreign audiences and we sing as I said, we speak their language, we sing their language. We sing in German, we sing Italian, we sing in all these languages. Uh, the only thing is that we don't sing in French, but that will be done as well very soon <laughs> because we have French blood. Uh, so sometime soon, but yes, uh, it has been a wonderful journey up to now and it's wonderful to go and sing to foreign audiences. Actually. Okay, so Ishan and Rohan, you all have achieved a lot. What is your next goal? Well, uh, in terms of music, we are looking at... Uh, uh, making more collaborations with with uh, with foreign artists. We are having certain discussions. We also want to bring in uh, a sense of uh, fusion into our music. Uh, we want to change certain things. We even the concerts that we do in Sri Lanka. We want to change the uh, the setup. You know, I mean, there are so many facets facets to doing a doing a production, as I call it. So, I mean, from the stage to the lighting to the sound to the genres of music that we choose uh, to the food. Uh, I mean, sit down dinners have been done by both of us for the last 14 years, unbroken. Uh, uh, and sadly, no one else has followed this. You know, we, we are the only people who have been doing this for the for, for the last 14 years. And sometimes we do two dinner shows, three shows uh, for a year. And, you know, it's you, you know this, you know, uh, it's it's not an easy thing to put out, you know, uh, because it's all attention to detail from every little thing. So that's why I call it a production. And then everyone is a stakeholder of that, including the audience, including the people who do the sound, including the people who are the valet parkers at the Hilton Colombo, including uh, the toilets being uh, nice and clean, including the food uh, and everything, the sound, the, the, the ambience, everything, you know. So, uh, it's a lot of things, Dinesh. So, we want to change it, you know. It, it may not be huge changes, but at least it will be something refreshing, something subtle for the audience who comes to see us next. Okay. Uh, Ishan, uh, in many developed markets, the private sector actually invests a lot of money in music and entertainment. Uh, but what is your uh, what is your assessment of the Sri Lankan private sector, and what more can they do? Yeah, I think uh, the Sri Lankan sector has been supporting us from our inception, and I must say, a uh, lot of people have had questions as to why they are supporting us uh, and. Uh, uh, why not them and why not some <laughs> others but uh, I think the sponsor's response has been you know if there is something quality ushered uh, and that they will definitely support it so we've had some of our sponsors have been there from our very inception sponsoring every single show uh, and they also say their return on their investment has been great 
So, um, yes, but saying that, we, we do have a lot of sponsors and partners who make these shows possible. Uh, however, I think if there are others who can also support uh, not only us, but even other artists who are up and coming, that would be a good thing. Other artists who will add value on stage. You know, not to get up today and say, I'm going to do a show in three weeks. That does not work. You know, and 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 sponsors want something, as Ishan said. You know, it's where you pitch it, Dinesh. You know, uh, there, there are different markets. You have the mass market, you have the niche market, you know. So it, it's basically as a brand where you want to pitch yourself. Now, where the Delano brothers are concerned, we've we've pitched ourselves at a certain point, you know, and and in a niche. It's a niche. I mean, whether you like it or not, it's a niche. Uh, and you also would not have everyone as a sponsor or a partner would want to support that, you know. Uh, so one of the things is, what do you do? What do you give out? You know, and, and it's a, it's always a case of review. You, know? you you need to review it yourself, and you need to get it reviewed by others who are who are uh, pa partners, who are stakeholders of the show. So so it's a combination of so many things. Uh, but I mean, I, I, I urge the, the, there are others in the private sector um, who actually can support, can support us because we are going to bring in new things, uh, certain things I don't want to talk about, but there's going to be a new look, a complete new change of what we're going to be uh, bringing to the stage. And also do support there are others. There are enough of other, other artists who are up and coming. The Dillian Roy brothers were unknown territory uh, when we were started by two, two big companies in Sri Lanka. I can't mention names for obvious reasons here, but they've continued that. One of the companies support us, supported us for 10 years and then bowed out uh, for, for reasons of, of their own. Uh, there was nothing, not, no problem where we were concerned. Uh, but the other company has continued to support. Then there are so many others who are also joining the brand. Uh, so the brand is brand is doing very well. Uh, and obviously, there is return on investment for sponsors. Uh, okay. The only message that I would give other youngsters who are coming to the stage is do something that is wholesome uh, and just don't do it for the sake of... Uh, Rohan, I know you do a lot of work to develop rural talent. Uh, Talk about some of those initiatives and how the private sector can support you in those. I'll let Ishan. Uh, yeah, we have done uh, uh, occasional workshops with children uh, from Jaffna to uh, the south to uh, Kandy and that area. So, and it's always rewarding to be with the next generation of our country and, you know, to uh, share whatever we have with them. Uh, we've also in the process started a thing called the National Unity Orchestra um, and we've already had a few shows and uh, this empowers uh, the orchestra, the, the individuals. Uh, you know, the thing is, it's not only uh, performing because when some of these people come from rural villages and play in Colombo, it gives them the ability of going back to the village and teaching a whole heap of other people because Colombo is considered the qualifying ground or rather the level you need to achieve to be able to teach in those villages. So uh, it's not only a case of, you know, making music. It's also empowering others uh, to take it on, on themselves. And also, Dinesh, the fact of a, a musician coming from the village has nothing to do with whether the person can speak English or, or, or something else, right? Uh, it, uh, I mean, you look at other, other nations, how many nations cannot speak English, but they play one one language which is universal, which is music, you know. So, music music. yeah, music is universal. So, so that's the language that we speak. You know, the, this this notion of, you know, you not knowing English and you can't play is, I, I think it's, it's a bygone era, you know. Uh, and I think it's quite silly for people to think that way. Sadly, it is the case in, in most most forms in, in, in Colombo. So we, we want to change things. And for us, it's a matter of we've, we've done, I think, enough for the industry. Now it's a matter of how can, we, how can we give back. So the message that I have for the private sector is, yes, we work with people in, in Jaffna. We work with pe people in Kandy. We work with people in, in Gaul and the South. 
support us because support the schools. That is where the music begins, you know, and that is where you make a musician. You know, I mean, if Ishan and I didn't have that background in school, we would not be where we are today, you know. So, I mean, of course, the school, I mean, where we went, it, it, it was always there. That was part of the part of the curriculum, part of the, the, the empowerment, you know. So we, we could always, you know, evolve. But there are places, schools that don't have that, you know. So if, if there's anyone who's interested, I mean, they could speak to us. We could work together on this with, uh, with certain schools in, in these areas. Uh, and, and you will see it will be like another Sanat Jai Surya coming from, from out to Colombo and then playing a World Cup and winning the player of the tournament, you know. So like that, there are so many things that we can do together. If anyone is interested, we will be very happy to work together. Okay. Any quick advice to budding uh, entertainers and musicians? <laughs> I'll be very strong if I talk. I will let you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, is what we would like to say. Everything has to, you know, you need to prepare, you need to do your exercises, you need to, uh, everything has a plan. It's like, you know, some children like to st uh, wake up today and sit the exam tomorrow <laughs> without anything, any preparation. So I would say preparation is a key, uh, you know, uh, practicing and of course, you know, vocalizing and all those things. Yes. If, you know, if I may just add to that, sometimes when I see all these, these new programs of what superstars and all these things, you know, sadly, my, my, you know, there are so many people who call themselves coaches and things like that. Voice coach, right? I, I am very sad to say that I don't know from where they got that qualification saying a voice coach. Because you can't just call yourself a voice coach without, without knowing the entire pedagogy of singing. You know, it's, it's, it's something that you need to study, you know. So sometimes when I see some of these singers who are singing, you know, their talent is there. But the technique is not right, right? And if you need to learn that, you need to go to people who really know about it. Sadly, in Sri Lanka, in, with all due respect, there may be a few people who know it, but the majority don't know it. So what happens is the longevity of someone singing will be cut short. You know, as Ishan said, instant noodles, yes. Come and sing today and you win and you go, you're fine. But there is so much of, when I see some of their positions here, their voice, the, the neck and all that, you can see in, uh, veins popping out and this and And sadly, we don't have enough of people to coach those children how they should get that sound out. You know, okay. that's one of the things that I see, you know, it's always good. Okay, so they come, they win and they go, yeah. right? And people call themselves coaches and things like that. I laugh to myself saying, what on earth do you know about as a voice coach? Sad to say. Um, uh, by the way, what do you think of Will Smith's behavior at the Oscars? I thought it was perfect. <laughs> and I say this, and I say this because, you know, uh, sadly, some of our people, even in the church today, don't know what to say where. This can include priests, it could include bishops, it could include anyone, right? Politicians, everyone. They don't know, they think that everything is a joke, Dinesh, right? So you go and crack whatever you want to at any stage and you think, ah, ha, ha, in the name of a joke, you know, but you need to understand something. This uh, Will's wife has a disability, right? Uh, a condition, right? She has a condition, right? I mean, you, 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 you don't go, you don't go and make fun and insult a person who has a condition like that. You know, I mean, leave alone doing it to someone who's quite normal is one, but doing it to someone who has a condition, I, and I mean, sadly, I don't know why Will Smith went and apologized because I don't think he owes an apology that other fellow is a fellow who needs to apologize to the public for what he did. Yeah. Uh, Rohan and Isha, you guys are also into business. Talk about some of the industries that you all are engaged in currently. So uh, we are involved in the tea business and we have been now for some time. And uh, one of the new things that we have done in the industry is to make the uh, existing tea bag machine staple free. And uh, thereby we have created something to be on par with the new machines. 
uh, where the quality and things like that are concerned. Uh, it was designed for the small and medium enterprises, but uh, we are happy to report that it's now being used by multinationals such as Unilever and Tata. Uh, they have been, Unilever was our first buyer and they have 15 machines working, uh, converted machines in uh, India. And now the others are joining as well. In Sri Lanka, we have had George Stewart, who were the first two, uh, two bought two full machines, uh, outright, outright purchases from us. And uh, it's gaining a lot of momentum and it's going very well. And it's a great thing for Sri Lanka at this time, I think, you know, to come out with a global invention. And this was done by no one else other than our father, Rohan de Lanarol, senior. And uh, he's uh, 77, he'll be 77 this year. And uh, we are very proud of him. Okay, is this the first of its kind or? Uh, it's a first of this kind where this particular machine is concerned. It's a constant a tea bag machine, which we have converted to be staple free, but we are working on others as well. Okay. And my final question to you both, uh, both is, what, what do you want your legacy to be? And, uh, and in terms of expectations from our future leaders? Uh, we'll start with the expectation of future leaders. I think uh, we are in this situation because of who has been leading us for the past. <laughs> up to now. Up to now. So uh, it's a very sad situation. I mean, even with a global invention such as this, today Rohan and I are wondering how do we, you know, uh, make sure our delivery is on time because of, you know, uh, even to power a generator, you don't have diesel. So, I mean, it, it, it's a funny situation we are in. Uh, so I think... Uh, not only this government, uh, Dinesh, all governments post-independence have, have to take, you know, all the rap and the crap for what has gone on. You know, uh, so, I mean, you can't, you can't put the blame on any one person, right? But, uh, I mean, I always say, you know, uh, it's like, you know, after Aurudu, you go to a supermarket and you don't have goods, right? I mean, but Aurudu is something that comes every year, no? So supermarkets should know, then it's it's all about planning. Supermarkets should know to stack up and keep so that after Ovundu, there's enough of stocks for people to come and purchase again. Just like that, fuel crises, power crises, uh, 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 what do you call all it? Lack uh, all lack of planning. No, these are, I mean, simple as that. So I think all the leaders, everyone, everyone, all presidents, all governments have to take the blame for this, not one government. Yeah, and your legacy... Uh, in, in terms of legacy, I think we would just like to be remembered as two good human beings and who have done something, who have touched people's lives, who have touched uh, their hearts and soul with our brand of music. And uh, I think that's the legacy we would like to leave behind. And of course, maybe uh, to being a part of uh, this kind of global invention and uh, giving a new lease of life and thereby giving a new lease of life for a lot of companies uh, who may have to otherwise close down because no one can afford these brand new machines at the price that they are uh, sorted and especially with our dollar crisis now. Okay, Rohan, you can have the last word. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing much to be said, actually. I think Ishan just uh, ironed that out well. Um, so yes, if we can be remembered as people who have done something for the industry and can be remembered for doing that. I think, uh, I mean, look, we are not perfect. I'm not perfect, neither is Ishan. I'm sure we have our own faults, but uh, if we can be remembered as people who, who empowered in terms of where music is concerned, in terms of where the industry is concerned, we belong to a, a category called uh, SMEs. And if we have been able to give that new lease of life, thanks to our father who has done this, uh, world invention um, I think that will be a legacy I mean certainly I mean even today if you talk to so many teabagging technicians in so many companies they say uh, Rohan De Lanaro, you know they, they know who the person is and they know him as a very good engineer but I think finally he'll be remembered as someone who invented something uh, to the teabagging machine uh, and he'll be remembered in years to come as someone who's who's been able to give that new lease of life for a 
for the longevity of the small and medium enterprise tea bagging companies you know because otherwise guaranteed now the three years time including us we would have to shut down we, we because we can't invest in uh, something like three hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars mm-hmm. for a new, per machine you you can't I mean we don't have the because when do you cover your ROI companies with huge pockets can do that but small and medium enterprises would never be able to do that so yeah I, I suppose that's that's the legacy that we would like to leave behind uh, and we hope that people can aspire to be what we have. Uh, and continue this journey that at some point of time we'll have to stop. Uh, but we hope that there'll be someone to take over and, you know, give this kind of entertainment for... Okay. okay. So thank you, Rohan and Ishan. Great talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Dinesh. Thank, thank you, as always. Thank you.